Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, <laughs> no, uh, wherever you may be. Welcome to our Open Enterprise Server product update webinar in August 2024. Uh, thanks for joining. We have uh, interesting news to tell today. So um, I hope I'm audible and I hope that my screen is visible. Girish, can you yes, verify? Mike. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, what's going on? Uh, let's quickly start some upcoming events. If my, yeah. Okay, so upcoming events, you all know that the Open Text, a major event from Open Text, Open Text World is coming up in uh, Las Vegas in November. So if you want to join, the registration link is available. And um, it's a very exciting um, event. So if you have the chance to go there, please do so. Uh, from the other end, we are in the last webinar, we already announced that we will do a DAH or DA tour, which means Germany, Austria. Um, so the locations are fixed and the dates are fixed. The uh, What you see on the right-hand side is what you find at the moment. So next week or the week later, you will find the registration and agenda and so on. Um, so save the dates. So 5th of November is in Vienna and 7th November in, in Dusseldorf. So we changed a bit the the uh, order of the locations uh, from the past years. Um, and we are very excited to announce that TTP Bangalore Developer Conference will be held in December. So it will start from the 30th of November, uh, which is a Saturday, um, and end on a Friday on the 6th of December. It will be in the Open Text Office in Bangalore. Um, and there are some changes that we made to the past TTPs. So you will find a lot of more workshops. Um, some of those are already mentioned here. We are, um, so the official registration and uh, registration page and agenda will be available soon. Um, the plan is next week or the week after. Um, so take a look at, um, uh, the ttp.org website, and then you will find before you register already the complete agenda. So it's it's really focused on get in touch with the engineering team, with the product managers in Bangalore, have one-to-one -one sessions, but also very, very interesting um, because the, the, the focus is also on education training, right? So you get workshops in depth, so where you can, uh, Girish, do you want to add something to 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 these um, to the Bangalore uh, TTP? Uh, sorry, Mike, I, I think you covered it pretty well. So the, just the fact that these uh, 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 this event is not going to be uh, streamed uh, or available uh, later for for viewing. Uh, this is going to be in person event. Um, uh, like Mike mentioned, you will have direct access uh, uh, to the uh, engineering because that's working out of the Bangalore office. Um, and also uh, Mike and uh, uh, Robin and all the engineers will put together uh, a number of uh, sessions and workshops. The focus we want to put it, put more on uh, uh, is the workshops, uh, do some hands on like we I think Peter reached out, reached out to several uh, previous attendees and have asked uh, what workshops would make sense for them. So these have some of these have come out as the top asks, and uh, we we're trying to put together a lot of lot, as many as possible. So you have the uh, the uh, the uh, the experience to try it out and ask questions to the people who are actually building these uh, uh, modules and features and so on and so forth. So uh, if you have a chance uh, to visit the uh, visit uh, Bangalore, uh, that'd be a great opportunity to be here and. Uh, and connect. Um, that that'd be great. Thanks, Thanks. Peter, for the for the for this one. Um, yeah. So take a look at the uh, TTP website um, next week um, or the week later. Then the registration and the agenda will be visible. Um, and as well, so um, 
we will also have TTPs, so save the dates for those in EMEA and US. So there are no fixed um, dates so far. So time frame February and uh, July for the US one. So keep those dates if you want to join um, the TTP there, then put it on your or your on your agenda and um, save the dates. Um, yeah, today today what we want to cover today is um, as usual we will get an update from from Girish about what's going on, and after that we will get uh, some insights from Rami and Atish. Atish is right, right? Yeah, I think. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> you said that right. <laughs> Correct. Thanks. Um, to see some some workflows that we couldn't cover last time, and so we want to mention it today. So unified management, common management, distributed file service uh, file services. So let's take a look at those, and if we have time at the end, as you usually know, we can ask. Um, we have time for our questions and answers. That said, I want to hand over to Girish. Do you want to share the screen or to whom should I make the presenter? Uh, or should... Mike, can you please uh, uh, help me with uh, uh, yeah, sure. presenting sure. the screen? So, and then we will pass it to Rami. Uh, okay, no problem. Sorry, I think that'll be Atish first. So we'll pass it back to Atish so I can continue the whole demonstration. So, uh, there's a lot to cover today, uh, like uh, uh, Mike mentioned in the agenda. So uh, we would like to cover uh, the uh, entire uh, DFS uh, workflows in the Unified Management Console. Uh, so that's going to take a bit of time. Uh, uh, and, and, if, and if you're going to make it to the Bangalore uh, TDP conference, uh, most probably you'll have a hands-on workshop uh, to do all of this as well. Uh, we'll try uh, to cover as much as we can in the, today's webinar. So the mic covered uh, this last time. I missed the previous uh, uh, webinar, the last month's webinar. Uh, I uh, he already covered the twenty four out three release, so it's currently shipping. So you have uh, uh, you if you haven't consumed it, so do uh, give it a try and let us know uh, if you are if you have encountered any issues. Uh, Mike, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Sure. Uh, so uh, the. Uh, I'm going to leave this with you uh, for a moment here. So the, the goal is to do uh, the quarterly releases uh, uh, like we have uh, mentioned in the uh, in the last year. So we're going to be repeating that in the 2025 as well. Uh, so one of the primary goal for us is to uh, uh, move uh, needle on the unified management console. So we are there's a heavy focus on uh, ensuring all the high manager workflows are uh, getting completed in the unified management console first. And then we will go on to building uh, more use cases that uh, will make UMC much more useful and uh, relevant uh, uh, in the current uh, uh, deployment scenarios. Uh, there are a few other enhancements that are going to come in 24.4, such as uh, we're going to be uh, the, the most asked one that how do we manage uh, e directory, right? So we've been uh, hearing that a lot so we're going to we're going to bundle the identity console as part of the oes media so you don't really have to go looking for it and it would also be uh, integrated into the yast workflow so you have it all installed and configured in one go uh, uh, and and i think uh, again mike if i'm not wrong uh, you, when you run that upgrade workshop or install workshop you will show how to do this using auto yast as well which means you can spin off many uh, UMC IC servers uh, uh, in a Jiffy, right? So you don't really have to sit and get each and every time. So uh, that'll be interesting. And there are also a few other uh, things that we are building. So we we, we talked about the multi-factor authentication for SIPs and also uh, uh, upgrading to NSS64 uh, uh, using the uh, two tools. So they would all be coming in the 24.4 uh, and, and several other defect fixes and uh, and security fixes as well. So uh, I'll not go in depth of the other uh, uh, releases, but uh, you have this in front of your screen, so just take a look. Uh, Mike, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Sure. So what's what's more, uh, what we are more excited about is the fact that we're going to be running a beta program. So as uh, um, uh, we we ran the beta, pro the last time we ran the beta program was uh, during the twenty three point four release. So uh, 
for those who have uh, been part of our previous beta programs, uh, this is going to be a similar experience. Uh, but for those who could not make it uh, previously, like we would request that you please uh, give us your time uh, to uh, test the early uh, bills. <clears throat> So we would, you know, what we what we would have with the beta program is access to the early access to the new code, uh, and what we would value is your feedback, and and I, and with the ultimate goal of uh, having a release that's uh, uh, that's satisfactory to all of us, right? So uh, you can ship uh, uh, this release and you can uh, provide the feedback before the release happens, so that we can actually consume the feedback uh, before the release. Uh, so when is this happening? Uh, so we uh, the, at the moment uh, we're gonna be uh, uh, we are looking at doing this in the third week of September, uh, and uh, we're gonna you're gonna be receiving invitations, uh, an email invitation uh, by the second week of September or probably the early, sorry the late uh, uh, last uh, uh, late of first week of uh, September, right? So towards the end of the uh, first week of September. Uh, so if you haven't uh, 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 received the invite uh, by the end of second week of September, please do reach out and if you're interested to uh, get engaged in this program. Uh, so we will ensure that you receive uh, access to the, uh, the bills and access to the platform where you can collaborate and provide us feedback and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and in general, if you have any other questions and how can we make uh, this beta program experience better for you, uh, do let us know. So we're in the, we are, we are in, although we have closed on how we want to run the beta program, but we can still take the feedback and see if we can accommodate your feedback. So uh, I think Kevin is, uh, has a question, uh, but Ramesh pointing me out <laughs> to read that out. So Ken, no, sorry, I cannot read the question as soon as, as long as I'm presenting, sorry. No problem. Uh, uh, I think we uh, just so everybody know we have a, a, a half room full of people <laughs> <laughs> eagerly looking to present uh, what they have built. So uh, the question uh, Kevin asks, uh, can there be a continuous beta channel that we could continuously run in our labs? I think that's a fantastic question. I think that's that goes along the lines of what we have been discussing here to see the fact that we are building features uh, throughout the uh, year. I think it makes sense uh, to have uh, a, a beta program that continuously runs. Uh, we are we are looking at that. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, we we haven't we haven't made that program available yet. So, but we definitely have that in our radar to see how we make that happen. Thanks, Kevin, for that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So that's about the beta program. So uh, uh, do look out for those invites. Uh, and like I said, we really appreciate if your your time and uh, your effort uh, to test and uh, make this uh, quality release. Um, so, uh, Mike, to the next slide, please. So, I think uh, I think we'll then come to the main agenda of uh, the today's webinar. Uh, so, we will we'll pass the control back to Atish, uh, and uh, Atish will take us through uh, the management of distributed file services and. And, in, and I think Rami will uh, take us through a bit more workflows in the DFS afterwards. So, Atish, you are the moderator now. You should share your screen. So the screen is visible. Okay. All right. The presentation is in full mode. Yep. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. So, hope you can hear my voice. And uh, okay, we'll start with the uh, recent features that we have developed, which is about the distributed file systems. Moment to uh, come to the slide. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, under the BFS management, we uh, we are going to cover today replica management and the junction, junction management, uh, which are like the two major features. 
So uh, the replica management uh, will cover the uh, replica listing, which is to view all the replicas um, that the user has added. There is an option to create replica or an edit an existing, uh, like add a uh, new replica to an existing management context. So uh, I'll clearly show you like how to create a new replica and how to create a new management context along with that. And then after we uh, add a new replica, uh, how to add new, uh, to replicate to an existing management context, all those we're going to cover. Then the replica details to view all the details of a particular replica. Then configuring an existing replica will also cover. Then there are a few operations, so uh, which are like starting or stopping a replica, pausing or resuming a replica. These are like exclusive operations. Then we'll go through the repair operation uh, process for a particular replica. And then we'll see a uh, cancel repair. And uh, finally, it will be uh, touch touching up on the delete replica section as well. So after the replica management, uh, really Rami will cover uh, the junction management, which is very crucial for creating a junction or the, for the actual operation. Um, so the junction management will also have the listing of the junction, uh, running a new scan to identify all the new junctions or uh, that have been added, created. Uh, the create junction, like how to create a fresh new junction um, from a source volume to a target volume. Uh, the details about the junction, which is uh, like uh, doing all the property, all the paths for a particular junction. Then rename junction and configuring the configure junction. These are like uh, making modification to an existing junction, like changing the path and all those related. And uh, we have the sync rights, source to target and target to source. This is about like uh, setting the uh, rights from the source uh, volume to the target and uh, back from the target to the source. And ultimately, finally, uh, we'll be having the delete junction. So these are the uh, things uh, I'm going to cover. So without any further delay, I'll be uh, switching to the application. So this is the uh, QMC application. Uh, as you can see uh, on the home page, we have a new option called the storage technology. And under that, we'll be having a DFS, which is distributed by systems. So once I get in that, we'll be seeing the home page of the DFS. And uh, here you can see there are like two major sections. One is replica site and another one is junctions. Uh, I'll cover the replica sites for now. So uh, there is this browse button, which is the standard UMC server, uh, server browser. So in other sections, you may be like selecting a server, but uh, in this uh, section, you'll be selecting any existing management context. So, uh, <clears throat> for an example, I have already a management context called PS and I print. So I'll select those. And once I click on apply, it is going to uh, list out all the replicas. So it's a progressive loading. So it is going to scan all the uh, replicas and it is going to list it. We have standard operation like the advanced filters uh, and uh, uh, we have the sorting of the uh, uh, replica so that. Uh, it's like standard operations are there, which the user can perform. Um, so this is about the listing part. So uh, I'll straight go ahead and create a new replica site. So uh, when we create a new replica, it is actually going to create a management context. So basically the management context is a very crucial part in case of the distributed file service. So usually, uh, we create a management context on any of the container. So maybe it is a O or a is it an organization or any of the organization unit we can create a management context? So after we create a management context, it is going to give you the scope in which the service can, uh, we can perform the uh, DFS related operations on any of the service or any of the volumes that belong to this management context. So from the tree, we can select any of the container. Maybe it is the root container we can select or we can, um, in the, uh, in the deep down level, we can select any other container, which is an organization or an organization unit. So uh, once we select a, a container, we can proceed right to the next step to uh, select a server. But before that, uh, one more thing is that we can also like uh, create multiple management context. So for an example, I can create a uh, management context from the open text, which is like on the organization level. And if I want to manage my uh, volumes more effectively, then also I can go and I can uh, create a administrative management context which can, which can uh, set deep down level. But I can also parallel if I have two containers on the parallel, or I can also create a uh, two different management contexts. 
and they will be operating uh, separately. Uh, they will not be like uh, uh, conflict, conflicting it, uh, with each other, and they will be operated uh, like they'll be completely operating separately. So for the time being, I'll select the uh, open text as the uh, my management context. Then I'll go to the next step. The next step will I'll have to select a uh, server on which I can um, create a replica. So. Uh, the replica is an essential part as it uh, stores all the details about the service uh, that is present in the management context. So, at minimum, we can select one replica, and in max, we can select uh, two servers to create a replica. So, when we select two replicas, they kind of like uh, like uh, they create a uh, replication of the existing uh, uh, information in the DB, and uh, those uh, two replica servers they will be constantly in sync so that the information will be. Uh, Available in both the places. So whenever uh, one of the replica goes down, the other one will be available to uh, uh, run the DFS related services. And all the operations, like the all the DFS operations that will be uh, performed in the uh, replica service, which is also going to rely on the replica server. So for the time being, I'll be selecting this uh, server as the replica server. Then I'll continue the next. So I have to select a path. Maybe uh, the user can select a default path, or they can also select a uh, volume. So let's isolate the volume first volume. Okay. And once I click on next, it is going to show me the summary. So in the summary, once I click finish, it is going to create a uh, new replica. Along with that, it is going to create a new management context. So uh, now uh, I have added the management context. So again, I'll be going back to the filters and I'll select uh, this open text as the management context. And once I uh, click on the filters, sorry, once I apply the filters, I'll see that uh, this management context will also be listed out here. So uh, this is about uh, like creating a new uh, replica. And as you can see, there's a new management context is also uh, created. Uh, after that, I will show you like how to add a replica to an existing management context. So <clears throat> simply we can just uh, select a uh, replica and uh, we can click on the add. So what it will do is that it'll, it is automatically going to select the management context and uh, uh, there it will be allowing us to select a uh, server. So uh, let's say I select the second server and I click on the next. and. Uh, I can choose a default path or select path. So for this time, I will be choosing the default path. And I'll be proceeding with it. This is the summary page. And ultimately, I can click on the finish. <clears throat> so this is going to add this particular replica to the uh, management context of the event. <laughs> so the replica is called, has, got, has been created. And uh, it will reflect in a while. Okay, all right, it's there. So uh, there are also some additional other operations that also we can perform. Um, for example, we have we can also view the details of your particular replica. So once we click on the details, it uh, it will show the side panel where we can see the status as running. Uh, there'll be additional information like the threads running, threads requested, the creation date, the running since property, and the management context, so all this information the user can see. And these are only read only information. So uh, the configuration related, I mean, if we want to modify or any, uh, or to configure any property, then we can do that in the configuration section. Apart from the detail, it also provides you a uh, like the configure cost of operations. So I'll be uh, going one by one in detail. So if I click on the configure, it will let me uh, modify the threads and the path of that uh, particular replica. <clears throat> so uh, you can see that I can uh, change the number of threads. So this is basically assigning a more processing thread to this particular video service. Uh, I'll not change the path for now. So once I confirm on this uh, configuration uh, settings, then I can click on the con confirm. 
and uh, this is going to apply the uh, configuration to this particular replica. And once you go back to the details page, uh, this uh, updated information will be available. So as you can see, the thread, uh, the thread running and the thread sequestered has been changed. Then we have the option to uh, pause the replica. So once we, uh, since we, uh, like once we click on this pause operation, it's just going to uh, pause the value service. So uh, the actual DFS service will be available, but uh, this will only be paused. And uh, again, we can start the service also. So once you click on the resume, the pause operation will be again uh, resumed back. There are a few other operations, which is like the stop operation. So once you click on the stop operation, it is going to completely stop the VLD. So the DFS services will not be available uh, anymore. And uh, you can see that the status will also change. Now, once I start this operation, it is again going to uh, be started. So the will be like loading the VLD again, and uh, all the DFS services will be uh, up again. Finally, we have the repair DFS replica. So uh, there might be some certain circumstances where some of the uh, Replicas might fail. Uh, so in that uh, uh, during that time, we can just uh, click on this repair DFS replica options. So it is going to give you three uh, different options: replace with the lead or safe copy, copy from another replica site, and rebuild from the directory tree. So we can choose any of these options uh, depending on the requirement. And uh, for the time being, I will click on the rebuild from the directory tree. And once I confirm it, it is going to start the rep uh, replica repair process. So as you can see. Uh, has been a notification. It has started. The status will change to repairing. And once we go to the details, you can see that the status is running. So this process is very quick because I don't have much data uh, uh, in my system. So uh, uh, it is like uh, it is straight away going to the running state. <clears throat> But if I have a lot of data, then it might take some time, in which case in the details screen, we will see that uh, there is an uh, cancel repair option will be there. So in this section, uh, we will be having some additional settings where we can like uh, cancel an uh, running process. And also depending on the status, uh, uh, like if it is in the repair or uh, if it has been uh, running or failed, the status uh, will also be be changed. And uh, also, uh, depending on the repair, the status will also be reflected. So, if it is like a rebuild uh, from, like, uh, if it is a rebuild operation, then the status will show a rebuild. And once the whole repair process is complete, it is going to show the status as 100% complete. So, these are just traditional information. Uh, apart from that, we have few advanced uh, filters operation where we can like uh, filter out. So, let's say I click on that. Start operation, it is just going to show all the start replicas. If I click on the running operation, uh, running uh, DFS status, it is going to show all the running replicas. Um, so these are few, uh, these are all the operations that is uh, associated with creating a replica in a management context. Then um, we have few more operations uh, which is like related to the junction. Mm -hmm. So probably uh, Rami will take uh, take you forward with this. So. Stopping the sharing and we'll be handing over to Ram. Thanks, Hapis. Okay, I will be sharing my screen. Hope I am audible. Yes, you are, Rami. And you are a moderator, so you should share your screen now. Yeah. Hope my screen is visible. It is. Thank you. Going to login. You can see this is login screen. Admin. Okay. 
Technology and the Storage Technology BFS. Replica site already at this explain. I am going to explain junction. This is very first screen. For list junction, we have to select select the objects or we can select the volumes objects or pool object in the screen. In four ways we can we can list the junction. I will go one by one. If we know the server name directly, we can go and search or otherwise we'll browse like others. Under OES. I am selecting 89 server. Okay, this is junction listing. Here, uh, some of the volumes have not been scanned. That's why we are alerting. So we need to click run scan. Run scan, we are having top right corner. If I click run scan, this table will refresh and it will scan the unscanned volume. So I'm going to click run scan. Yeah, here we are showing. We show notification in that says we have to repress that list. So I'm going to repress. Now that alert message gone. So now all the volumes have list, scanned and listed here. And next I will go with pool, pool objects. So I will select so here also I have added few junctions so it got listed here Okay, this is resource object selection here. I haven't scanned. This is very first time we used to get this screen. First time we have to scan. Then we will get the junctions or if there is no junction, we have to create new junction. So I will click scan. There is a question on that. So if you want, if you answer the same. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It got listed here. So I I will go with now junction listing other operation. I will use 89 server for demo. Rami, are you taking questions between or at the end? Because there's a question. Okay, end we'll we'll take it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is the junction listing. We are having search, refresh, and so all, uh, select all column and default. Like other tables, we are having features here, pagination and advanced filter. Here I am having, we can filter based on status available. Yeah, these are all available. Let's I filter based on broken. The only broken junction details coming here. And let's say based on OES target, we can filter. And this is OES target list and I will go with non-OES target. Yeah, these three are non-OES target. We can, using advanced filter, we can filter the data. And we have one more advanced filter, target path. Based on path, we can filter. This is like other tables. Yeah. 
front page in sense. We can go directly to next page if I want to go third page. We enter and go to page. Yeah, now we are in third screen, third page. Uh, next, I will go with actions. In junction, we are having list of actions. Okay. Details, rename, configure, sync rights, source to target and target to source and delete. I will go with one by one. First, I will start with create junction. Now, I am going to create junction. I am going to select context. I am selecting OES as my context. And here we have to enter junction name. I give it And here, are, here we can search our server or we can browse. Okay, now. I'm having volume list inside this volume 10. I have source. This uh, this I am taking as source path, selecting continue. And next here I am going to select target path. Like this target I have folder name. So I selected this one. I'm going to next screen. Here. This is source trustee right screen. If we have any trustees, it will display here. Currently, I don't have any trustees, so we are displaying messages. Says trustees not available to browse. We have to add trustee. So I am going to add few trustees now. I am going to add few. So here we can modify the trustees. If I if I select enable all rights, it will enable all the rights. Or we can remove all the rights. Or if we want, we can modify some rights. So I am going to modify few rights. Continue. This is target trustee rights. This is this also like source trustee rights. So I am going to add few. So here I'm changing and continue. This is summary screen. Here we are displaying all the details, whatever we have previously done. So all the things we are displaying here. So if I click on finish, a junction created. We are displaying notifications plus recent action. Here we are adding. Now I have created junction demo report 24. So we are displaying here. Next, okay, I will go details junction. This is nothing but we are displaying. Okay, I'll go. I think while you're doing that, you might probably take the question mm. that was previously asked. So, uh, Kevin asked, okay, what is the scan function under junction I actually give you? I didn't want to give it a go. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Kevin, uh, if I understand your question correctly, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, mm -hmm. so, uh, the scan is basically doing a full file walk across all NSS volumes in the selected server to find which all junctions are present in those volumes. Uh, we don't have to do this periodically or multiple times. It, it is a one-time activity when we are installing the DFS service. If there were any junctions created prior to that installation or repair or snapshot reversal or any of such maintenance activities, then a scan would be required for us to get the list of junctions that are currently present. And once the scan is complete, DFS keeps a live count of it as and when you modify or create junctions. But that first scan needs to be done for it to know which all files are junctions and not simple. I hope that answered your question. Please carry on. 
Okay. This is and I also good. noticed that uh, uh, while creating the uh, junction, that uh, once you select the source, it will probably uh, I operate from within that management context and it won't let you uh, yeah. it searches. It's a nice thing there, so you don't end up creating wrong junctions, which won't ultimately work. Yeah, the audio is not readable. Okay. Somebody Sorry. mentioned audio is reading away. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is junction details. Here we are displaying about the junctions. We are name, source, path, management, context, and target. We created time and last modified. These details we are displaying here. This is just we are displaying about the junction. Yeah. We will go with next action. Rename. This is a thing, but we are going to rename that jun jun junction. I'm going to yeah. yeah, it got renamed. The list also got updated. This one. Okay, next I will go with configure junction. Okay, this is nothing but edit junction. Here we can change the path, target path. I'm going to change the target path. And here also we can have set the rights. Same create during creation we have done. Same thing here also we can add or remove. Here also. Okay. And this is summary. We are showing only modified details here. So click on them. Yeah, it's got configure. Yeah, this one I have changed. Configure this target path also got changed. Previously, O is vault 12, now O is volume 11. And next action is sync rights source to target and target to source. Now I will make so sync rights source to target. This is nothing but we are synchronizing trusty rights from source to target. Here we are displaying source path and target path. If I click confirm source trusty rights, we will synchronize from source to target. We can we are right synchronized from source to target. We can see the notifications. And if I go on, we can in configure screen, we can see that. Yeah, this source trustees are added here target it got added after synchronizing these two got added here this is sync rights to source to target now i will make sync rights target to source this also same like source to target we are just target to source we are synchronizing rights so if i click on confirm this target rights will come to source we go configure we can confirm that changes. See here, whatever target trustee has, these three data is added here. So this is sync rates to target to source. Yeah, next last action is delete. Yeah, this is we can delete single actions or multiple. Now I am going to delete single junction. Yeah, we are displaying warning message like we are deleting both the junction file and associated trustees rights are removed. The data and trustee rights at the target location remain unaffected. So we are asking, do you want to continue? If yes, then this junction is deleting. It got deleted. We can perform multiple action as well in delete. I delete few things. So now I am deleting three junctions. So here we are showing three junctions are deleted and same for all the actions we are having uh, recent actions. So whatever action I performed, we are displaying recent actions here. It got updated.
that's all i have and then you can yeah i would like to call arun to show junction traversal so uh, sorry before we okay. uh, move on to the next uh, step uh, i think there is another question in the chat uh, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Jano says, uh, do you have any information about the speed of the actions for any life, uh, large environment? Consider a case of uh, 10 terabyte volume involving uh, BFS with uh, 100 million of files. Could actions take the same time as in, uh, in a small environment that you have demonstrated now? Uh, so whether uh, the operations like pass, stop, start, uh, run junction scan, Modify a bit of junction data. Uh, how does how do they fare compared to the small deployment? Right. So uh, I don't know. I will I'll give it a go and probably let you also add on top of that. Uh, so uh, the the initial scan uh, uh, would take time to go through uh, all the uh, entries uh, in your data set. So that's that's a mandatory step. Uh, and unfortunately, we are carrying the initial design of DFS and we cannot do away with that. So uh, what we are trying to make improvements in that is build a new DFS management, a uh, new DFS system called global DFS. That's, that's not in the purview of this topic today, but in the current context, the way the DFS would work now, you need to run scan at least once, uh, not for the purpose of UMC, but even if you had run the scan uh, before using the I manager, so that the same would be honored in the unified management console mm -hmm. as well. So you don't really need to repeat that operation. So the tool will tell you if it is not properly scanned and it will give you an option to scan. So if you're not seeing that option, your, your, your environment is good to go. You don't really need to do anything. Back. The other operations, which were taking time, we will take a look at them uh, and why they're taking time. Uh, and we will uh, work on improving the performance of them. So thank you for the feedback. Yeah, I think you covered it pretty well, Girish. And like you mentioned, just the scan operation, and if I have to be hard pressed about it, uh, since we are showing source rights and target rights, that also depends on the total number of users your e-directory tree has. So these are the two things that would be dependent on the size of your environment. Most other APIs are, uh, it'll have similar performance, whether it is a small setup like ours or a production setup like yours. Uh, but yeah, as you noticed, we are on a slightly slower network and these are yet to be optimized APIs and we will work on them. But these are the two operations that I would see as a bottleneck today. So uh, again, I don't know, this might be probably again, uh, brings us back to the beta program. And I mm -hmm. think it would be really great if, uh, if, if some of you can join the beta program and put this uh, code for a sprint so we will know if we are missing something in our environment that uh, we can capture in your environment. So that'd be helpful. Thank you. And it'll also show us where we can spend the most time optimizing, which API yeah. will be the best to spend time on optimizing. Sure. So, so yeah, uh, I just uh, stole a last couple of minutes of this uh, meeting to show a uh, part of the press feature for you guys. So this is something that we have, we are still in, in active development. It's, it will be part of 24.4, not 24.3 release. Uh, and uh, th this is junction traversal in the files and folders uh, uh, screen. The existing files and folders plugin, we are showing how uh, junctions would be traversed as a normal folder. And so, because this is an under development uh, feature, I'm showing it in my test setup, not in a production grade setup like the other demos. So, uh, first, I will go back to the DFS screen and uh, show a few example junctions that I've created in my test setup. So you can see I've just created three junctions here, uh, the junction VC12 and I mean V12C, v, V12B and V12C fin. Uh, and as you can see, the, the source path and target path are uh, listed here. Now I will uh, navigate to these exact folders to show you the same junctions in the files and folders uh, tab. Uh, as some of you may know, the junctions are basically just files in the files and folders that act as folders or symbolic links to uh, the target location. So uh, UMC will uh, traverse like a uh, SIFS client or uh, any other uh, file client, traverse this junction to show you the targets uh, folder structure uh, as though it, the junctions were just a normal folder. I'm going to demonstrate that here. So if, when I switch to the files and folder section, you can see we carry forward the server's uh, selection. And so uh, as you saw, I will uh, open the 
folder where I had created a junction. You can see, uh, despite this being a junction as indicated by the type junction, we are just indicating it like a normal folder uh, because it is a normal folder as far as a client is concerned. But when you open this folder, uh, you can uh, notice that it just navigates like a normal folder like I, I had just previously navigated, but we indicate in the breadcrumb that this is a junction so that you are aware that it is a junction uh, that we have traversed here. So uh, the keen eye among you might have noticed that this is an estate junction. So just for the fun of it, I'll just navigate once more to show you. <laughs> we can keep infinitely traversing this. And, uh, uh, and we do seamlessly traverse quite quickly on uh, the junctions. So this was just a quick overview on this. And uh, I welcome your feedback on this. This is a, just the first step implementation. Uh, if you think this is confusing or if this is this could be improved in any way, please do provide us feedback on this. Thank you. Thanks, Arun. I think that's that's just probably a piece of code that he wrote just before coming in. <laughs> we just put him on the spot to say, okay, just go out and do it. Uh, the, the reason we wanted to show this uh, uh, use case uh, is to let you know that the files and products is quite powerful. Uh, it's it's totally different from the implementation that you might have seen in the iManager. So a lot of lot of uh, use cases will are going to be integrated into the files and folders, and and that uh, and and it. it it acts and behaves like a, a natural uh, file browser, uh, and and you can perform a lot many operations from here as well, so rights management and so on and so forth. And then we also build other uh, use cases like uh, DST and uh, and uh, CIS. Uh, all of yeah. that would be coming under the files and folders uh, uh, purview as well. So uh, thank you for uh, doing this at a very short notice. So, Mike, I, I'm not sure if there are any other questions that we can take at the moment, uh, but other, otherwise, I think the planned demos are complete. And there are a few other things that uh, I just I think it was it is not explicitly called out. Like I mentioned earlier, I think my voice was fading. So, uh, most operations are built to uh, uh, help you succeed in doing those operations in the sense that the operations wouldn't let you select uh, items which do not which must not be selected. For example, if you're operating under a management you are trying to uh, create a replica uh, server uh, for an uh, for an existing uh, replica site, then it would let you only select the other server under that same management context. So to avoid uh, running into creating a configuration that's going to create future problems. So I think that's one that uh, the the other one that uh, uh, Arun showing just now is that you you, you selected a source for a uh, source for the junction. Yeah, and... selected the management context, and now the source and target are isolated to that management context as they have to be part of the same management context for the junction to be successful. Yeah. So the management context once selected, all servers and all the filtering that you can do further is restricted to that uh, management context. So you will be forced to select correct servers only to create your junctions. Yeah. So uh, Arun, I think if you continue to navigate and get into the rights uh, section, sure. And you may have to provide a, a nice just press of attention. Yeah, we are not creative people. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm I'm asking you to run a workflow which probably yeah. I'm not prepared for so. <laughs> No, we like <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a good example as well. We won't let you create targets to uh, a configuration folder and end up exactly. it wrong. <laughs> so uh, sorry. So uh, when you go to add the uh, uh, to add the rights, so the other thing that that I that I that has been a constant feedback for us is that in in a in a workflow like this, it wasn't uh, in in the in the previous cases when we gave this demonstration, we had the group names with group one, group two, and, <laughs> and the user names with user one, user two. It was very easy to know who is the user, and which is the user object and the group object. Now we are qualifying that with the So you can actually now know, this, this was a direct feedback, uh, which had been like frustrating for many of you. And we are also working on improving this object browser behind the scene. Yes. I, I, I believe uh, some of you pointed out that you have like, Hundred millions of files, and uh, and of course, I'm I'm assuming they will have uh, thousands and uh, thousands of users, and and, uh, uh, and and this table can be, I mean, this this container can be holding mm -hmm. thousands of users, and uh, and I, having to navigate through that would be a pain. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be adding uh, uh, more capabilities like searching and so on and so forth here. 
and within even this interface, we have I think this is the only uh, like only the user context is where we provide the ability to select all because that was a very dire need. Like I might have to just select a bunch of users in this container. Yeah. So at least the basic select all and uh, was one of the features that was again inspired by the feedback given by. Yeah. So. Uh... Again, so the reason I'm mentioning this is like there's an opportunity for you to uh, be coming on the beta program again, uh, and we we listen to your feedback and we would make the improvement. So uh, give it a spin, and, and even in the ones that are already in the field, 24 or 3 tools, uh, what are the features that's interesting to you? So just let us know your feedback, and we'll be happy to take them and and improve on that. Yeah, two questions. So uh, Ramesh tells me that there are more questions. Mike, please go ahead. Yes, yes, yeah, I want to mention the same. So thanks, Ramesh. <laughs> Faster than me. <laughs> yeah, so one question is uh, files and folders view of junctions looks really great. It was from Kevin, and he's asking if it is possible to for administrators to open files, change ownership permissions, and so on. So we, we, have, we have allowed the administrative operations such as uh, changing the ownership permissions and so on and so forth. But we haven't built the ability to uh, perform uh, opening of file or uh, yeah. the other of, of, uh, operations. But that's also uh, in the in the in the pipeline uh, to be able to uh, download, sort of like download uh, upload yeah. files uh, and and maybe take a quick look at the file. Uh, uh, but again, uh, just so you know, we are not going to be venturing too much into the filer use cases. So that would be under the filer purview. But we're going to build a bit more things. And, and and behind the scene, even for uh, searching the 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 files, we have aspirations to build indexing for NSS file system. And when we do have that, the search uh, uh, option here that you see in the files and folders will be much more powerful and faster, and it can look into the content and so on and so forth in future. Thank you. Um, and there's another question. I think HP came a little bit late because he wants to see what's changed in OS 24.4. So please take a look at the recording later on, or do you want to go back to the slide? I think take a look at the recording. It will be available soon. So um, there was what's coming up in 24.4. Other than that, um, any other questions? I don't see them. Nope. Um, yeah, and we are more or less on time. Um, we started two minutes late. We start in that. Uh, we end in that case uh, one minute early. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Rami. Thank you, Atish. Thank you, Girish, and all in the back end. Uh, um, Rami, sorry, not not Ramesh, but Ramesh. Thanks also because of the. Uh, take took a look at on the questions. So thanks a lot um, for to the audience. Thank you for joining. Um, please give give us your feedback if you want. Please send your information if you don't receive the emails in two weeks uh, uh, about the OBS twenty twenty four point four beta. So if you want to to join, we are very pleased to to see you there. And yeah, other than that, have a good evening, good day. See you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.